All right, so what we want to do is we want to try and recreate this report. This was just a simple parts list that I created. And we're not going to recreate this one exactly. This was just a proof of concept. What we're going to do rather is we're going to go to Setup Reports and we're going to find the panel stock cut list. I know this CLPS08 is what I want because it prints material, multiple materials per page. Um, so if I take a look at that, that's what this is going to look like. And we're just going to add a part count uh, to the bottom of each of these groups. So we're going to go to setup mode again, make sure this is selected, hit copy report, and say with part count. We'll hit OK. And we will see it's right here in our list. All right, and we're going to go to report properties. And what we need to do is we need to take the materials that are here and we need to filter them out by what's inside the job only and what uh, shows up here in this parts tab. So we're going to use this where as well as this having to get the results we need to kind of line up. So we're going to start by creating a new table. And we could go through here and use this, but personally I just like to add the table, add a field, and hit finish. I'm going to rename this job materials. All right. So now I'm going to I'm going to handwrite the SQL. You could use whatever form you wanted, whether you wanted to use Microsoft Access, Flyspeed SQL, or whatever other tool you use. But uh, I find that learning how to do this by hand gives you a better understanding of what's going on inside of the SQL. So that's why I like to try and do it this way. So we're going to select the CX material.id cx material.name from cx material. So you can see cx material is the name of this imported table. Um, I could use other tables that aren't showing up in this list, like whatever shows up in the report.mdb. If we need to find a table name, we can always just click on this button. And here are all the names of the tables. So you can go through and use this list to easily figure out what you need to do. Um, <clears throat> so when I click on this, now I've got all of the materials in there. That's too much because I don't have stuff like art glass wire, uh, half, uh, one half solid poplar. So what we need to do is we need to go in here and we need to create what's called an inner join. We're telling it to take data from two tables and only show the results of those two tables uh, when they are equal or matched together. So we're going to say inner join the parts table, which will give us a list of all the parts in our job, on the parts.materialID equals cxmaterial.id. So wherever the parts.materialID is equal to the cxmaterial.id, we will get results. And if I now refresh this by clicking on the job materials, now you can see only the materials that show up in the job uh, are here. But you can see it got a lot of duplicates. Well, that's because it's showing up one record for every part in the record field. So what we now need to do is we need to group that information together. So we can go group by, and we have to group by everything that's in the select field that is a, or in the select statement that is a normal field. So we go CX material.id, CX material.name. So when we go here, <clears throat> we can see there we go. We now have individual uh, singular items for each one we find in our uh, matching parts and material tables. So this doesn't give us a count of parts for each material. To do that all we have to do is put a comma and go count which is a function inside of uh, access or SQL that will uh, count up the number of fields we have. So while we've grouped everything together, I'm going to go open parentheses, parts dot part ID as part count. So what I've told it to do is as you're grouping all of these items together, count up the number of part IDs you get. Not Don't sum them up, just count them. So if the part ID is 75 and I have three parts that are part 75, it only returns three, not... Uh, 100, 225. So 
when I refresh this table and go through here, you can see now there are four three-quarter tandem parts. There are seven three-quarter one-sided melamine parts and so on and so forth for all of these items. And that is pretty much what we need to get the base uh, information here. But if we look at our parts table, there's one thing that you'll notice is our parts list or our, the materials we have are still less than what shows up here in the job materials. That's because hardware and other things have been taken out because this is a panel stock material cut list. So we're gonna go to our parts and we're gonna grab this wear field. All right, and actually we're not gonna use the wear. We're gonna read what's here in the wear. So we're gonna say parts.buyout is false and parts.part type equals zero. So we're gonna go here and we have to then add to our group by first. We go parts dot buyout and parts dot part type. Now the reason we do that is because we have to filter out information here. And if we don't, um, if we don't set it in that group by field, we're going to throw errors. So there was one more thing that we have to look at because um, if we refresh right now, we still have all that information there. Um, we're going to now go back to parts. We're going to look. There is a special additional filter under having. So we're going to take that. We're going to use CX material dot material type ID. So we'll go back to job materials and we'll add CX material type. Sorry, CX material dot material type ID. Now, because we're grouping by and we want to make this a little bit more clean, we're going to add the having here. And we're going to say parts dot buyout equals false and parts dot part type equals zero and CX material dot material type ID in open parentheses one nineteen or one comma nineteen close parentheses. Now if I typed everything correctly when I refresh, now you'll see I have a much smaller material list and that's just the materials, just the panel stock materials for this job. Basically whatever report we're copying, we want to look at all the filters that exist in the existing tables and we're going to copy them over to the job materials. That'll just make it easier to make sure everything's lined up and changed. Um, <clears throat> So, with that being done, the last thing we have to do is we have to add a relationship to this table. And we have to tell it how do the job materials and parts relate to each other. So the primary table, which is going to be the first table we use, will be the job materials. And then we're going to tell it to use the material ID. We're going to go then to our parts. And how does our parts join into that? Well, that's with the material ID field. We'll hit OK and it creates this relationship. So, we've got that done. All we have to do is close our uh, properties and click Design Report. Now, you'll see that our report we've been working on is still highlighted. Um, but just, just to make sure, in case you accidentally clicked anywhere, just re-click on that, that item and hit Design Report. The Report Designer now comes up. And what we can do is we can manipulate this report to in include our job materials and a subtable for that. So we have our parts table. Right now we're gonna, we're gonna basically copy this table into another table. And I'll show you how to do that. Um, basically we click job info, then click append element. I'm gonna select table, and you'll notice we have this job materials. And if I expand that out, there's the parts table included in it. So we're gonna click job materials since that's our parent table. And we're just gonna give it the name and hit okay. All right, and now it shows up in this uh, this value here. We're gonna double click on the table here in the objects list. We're going to delete the header line. We're gonna delete the footer line because we don't need those right now. And we're gonna go to the data line. We're gonna select our item. Um, now I'm using Cabinet Vision version 11, which means I have the newest uh, uh, engine here. I believe Cabinet Vision 10 will do this as well, but I'm not. I'm honestly not sure. Um, 
but I can go to the font and I can just change this individual data here. We'll make it say 20 points and make it bold, kind of let it stand out a little bit and we'll hit OK. So now we have that. We now need to copy this table into this, but we can't unfortunately just copy it or move it because of the way the table was created originally. So what we'll do is we'll select the job materials table and we'll click this button that has now become available to us, the append to sub element button, which will now allow us to add a table. Now it didn't ask us to choose the table and that was because there was only one table that was a child of job properties Now from here, what we're going to do is we're just going to hit OK. We don't want to add any information because we want to copy information from here to here. So let's go to our old table. As a matter of fact, just to keep it separated in the designer properties, I'm going to call this old table. All right. So I'll call this new one, new table. So what these are called is irrelevant for how the report works. That's just to keep it organized for us. So I'm going to go to the old table, I'm going to double click on that, and I'm going to go to the header line, and I'm going to copy these items, or actually I'm going to select line definition 1, hold down shift on my keyboard, and click on this date item, and on my keyboard I can hit control C, or uh, I can hit the copy button, actually it won't, looks, looks like it won't let me do that, so I'll just do control C on my keyboard, hit cancel, and now I'm going to go, instead of in my... Uh, materials I'm gonna to go to my job info and right here under header line where it shows the report name um, I'm actually going to paste that information in and hit OK so now it's thrown in this here so that I still get my pages uh, and uh, my, my information that I had before but not in underneath each material so what we're going to do now, we're going to go back to our old table, we're going to take our data line, um, and we're going to copy all of this, same way we did before. We're going to delete this empty field right here. Let's move this down so that it was in the same order that it was before. I'm going to hit OK. Now you can see it's starting to look a little bit more like that... Uh, that table did. Um, again, back to old table, we're going to go to group header, and this is going to be interesting. All we're going to do is get line definition 2 all the way down to cabinet quantity. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go to our new table, and because we don't have a group header for this, because that's not how we're doing it, we're going to go to our header line. We're going to hit, if this comes up, we're just going to hit cancel, and then control V, and when I hit OK, you can see now it's got a header that shows up. And we're going to do the same thing for the group footer. Oh, we're in the new table. We'll go to old table. Go to group footer. And we're going to collect all of this information. Go to our new table. And again, instead of the group footer, we're just going to put this in the footer line. I'm going to delete the empty definition there. Hit OK. And you can see now we've got all of the information we had before in the uh, old table. And what we're going to do, we can either delete it, or if we want it to not be there, we can uncheck it and then go to the appearance, I believe, appearance condition, and select never show, save it, close this, and view it. And you see we have all of the information that we had before. Now we're still missing our part count. And we're going to fix that right now. We're going to go into design. We're going to go to our new table. We're going to go into the footer line, and you can either put it before or after this, uh, this set of information, but we're going to have one of the line definitions selected, uh, and we're going to right-click on it and say, I'm going to put mine at the end. Actually, I'll put mine in the beginning. I'll go insert new table line, which will put one, I'll hit OK, above it. If I had gone append, it would go below it. So we're going to go here. We're going to add a new field. And we're going to tell it to go to the parts, I'm sorry, we're going to tell it to go to the job materials, part count. Um, but that doesn't really look good. We don't want it to do 4.0. We actually want it to say something. So I will do uh, open quote, 
number of parts, colon, space, close quote, and then I'm going to double click on the part count and you can see what it did. It entered it in so it would come out as a string because it uses the string function, the name of the field that we want to use, all right, the minimum length of the result, we can leave it at zero, and then the number of decimal spaces. We want zero in there, so it just comes out like that. Um, we'll hit OK, hit OK, and now we have number of parts here. Uh, let's kind of expand that out a little bit, actually. Let's go here to this field. Let's give it a width of, I believe it's 165.1. Um, yep. So now it is all that length, and we will actually tell it to also align to the uh, left, sorry, right, so that it's over here on the side. We'll hit OK, and now you can see I've got four parts there. Uh, I'll hit Yes to save that, and you'll see one, two, three, four, number of parts, four, one, one part, so on and so forth. So now you've got that nice... Uh, dynamic kind of uh, part filter that will show up all these materials we can if we filter out materials out of our um, oops if we filter out any of these job materials or add more materials then uh, the parts will show up for those materials um, we could actually go through and remove all of these these uh, filters here on parts, or at least the one for the material types, um, since we're filtering out and only creating a list of materials, but uh, that's a video for another day. Um, if you have any questions on how I did this or what, the, what needs to be done, please let me know um, on eSupport, and I will do my best to help you. Um, I'm sure there will be other people that will be able to help you as well. Um, and that's about it. Thank you very much, and have a good day.